So we are recording this officially to the cloud. And I forgot my stand, so I think I'll put some books underneath here. There we can raise it a little bit up by putting putting my the books. See, I wrote this book, The World is Open, but it's only good for holding up books. See, and I wrote this other free one, Adding Tech Variety, you can all download. Well, I'll just put it underneath my computer. So got other books for this class. I just watch the orientation from last time. I mean, I covered all that already. So tonight I surely covered new stuff, you know, only different things. So one new thing that I didn't cover on Sunday night is that this is one course. It's part of four courses that at one time were a core. 511, 521, 561, and 541 were four courses that everybody took at the same time and suffered tremendously at the same time. And they, the students would commiserate with themselves. And at the time I started, we had a huge master's program face-to-face. -face. And so the commiseration would happen. We'd go to Mother Bear's maybe and get pizza, um, or we go to regular Bear's place and get beer at the end on a Wednesday, on a Friday afternoon. There'd be just massive amounts of IST students, especially master's students. And we had an auditorium in the School of Ed that we could pretty much fill up with just IST students. We could bring in guests from around the world, whether they're working for Apple or for some other uh, and, and IBM or Microsoft or whatever, and they do uh, Friday morning talks. They had, we had a colloquium series uh, just for the core, the students in core. Um, and we had a Follies every year in the springtime where the students got to make fun of the faculty and the faculty got to make fun of the students. It was hilarious. You know, it's, it's recorded too. You can see me dressed up as Dr. Evil with my assistant, Minnie Me, doing a skit on the 10 mini myths of e-learning and other things. But we don't have that anymore because we don't have master students face to face. We maybe have a few Coast Guard people and one or two trickling other people coming in here. Most people are certificate, uh, online certificates or EDD or online masters. We have a few PhDs in the program. Um, so the face to face component has dwindled, uh, the online has increased like any program around the country has. And again, this 511 was really the Kickstarter, the, the kind of the base knowledge for everybody. So this course, I would think 511 and 711 are two courses in which are umbrellas that kind of, you can, you can take those two courses and kind of get a sense of the field from both of those classes. Dr. Brush is teaching 711 this semester. And pretty much a lot of the, the doctoral students will take it to get ready for qualifying exams maybe. But I think it's also a requirement maybe for minoring in IST. I think 711 is required. Uh, over time, this course, 511, kind of got lowered in importance in some ways. And the faculty who developed it, Dr. Mike Melinda in particular, who's retired 10, 12, 13 years now, um, maybe more. Uh, he's from Milwaukee, like I am. It's a place called Wauwatosa. And I'm from just south of that called West Dallas on the west side of Milwaukee. Um, but the claim to fame is um, Trump gave one of his rallies there. And God, I wanted to cover my face when I saw him in my old gymnasium in, in West Dallas, Nathan Hale High School. But anyways, be that as it may. Um, so there's a lot of Milwaukee people. My podcast partner, Chris Deedy from Harvard, who will be a guest in my other class, is from Milwaukee as well. Uh, we have an accent. And we do like to drink a beer or two a month or a year, just once in a while. Um, <laughs> for Michigan people, Wisconsin people, or Germans that came over and Polish people came. And so the, the accents are all the same up there. But anyways, Mike developed this course 40 years ago, maybe longer. And when he retired, he recorded video lectures. And so for the first five years, I taught this course from, well, from about 2015 to 2020, I kept those lectures and everyone watched those and listened to them. All the recordings were there. And about in 2020, right around the pandemic, I said, nah, I don't want to have them anymore. And um, so I deleted them and I've, I've got other resources. This course could be thought of as a pie. You have the giant slices of pie that you take and you eat. So one slice of the pie that you take and eat is going to be the um, readings for the week or weeks thereof. And you're to read three, four, or five articles a week. Don't look at the syllabus and think you have to read everything or you, you, you'll get freaked out. You'll be in a, you know, an insane asylum. You'll, you know, we, we, 
I don't want you all going crazy, but this is not my 100 page syllabus. It's only 27 or 28 pages. I think 511 is maybe 27. The other one's 28. No, this one's 28. And five. The other one's 27. So, um, but yeah, there's, there's options. The, the, the world is changing to have options and flexible forms of learning. And if I don't abide by that, um, students not, are not going to be um, finding the course to be engaging for them and relevant to their needs. That being said, I'm sure there are topics that I'm not, I've not included in here that you would like to see. Uh, so if you happen to buy one of the books or better yet, go to Dropbox and download it for free. So all these books that I recommend are in Dropbox for free. And I'll show you Dropbox here in a little bit. Um, so, you know, get the reading materials, that's free. And then there's some um, video clips. So I've what I've done different this semester that I haven't done before is that it, instead of me lecturing every week to you, I recorded the last semester I taught this course, I recorded myself every week. So those recordings are available to all of you. Plus, older recordings that I did, I did eight a, a series of eight lectures that have been used for about 15 years now where I look a lot younger. And they're available too, but maybe use last spring because they're newer, they're shorter a little bit. Um, I will say the ones I first did were maybe a little more professional. I, I I don't know if they are or not, but I used to teach P540, which is learning theories class. So this course utilizes those learning theories videos. Um, and it is kind of a learning theories class. It's kind of instructional design theory class but it's not really a theory class. It's more like getting your feet wet a little bit and, and what the field is about. Now, we had many faculty when I started and up until about five or six years ago who were in the corporate space, what would be called the HRD and HPT spaces, human resource development and human performance technology. Now, all that I'm telling you right now, I don't think I talked to the, the Sunday night class I mentioned, most of this is all new. So, uh, but I'll give you some of the same stuff I told them uh, here in a little bit. So we don't have any HPT people anymore. And um, Mike Melinda might have been considered in that camp. And Jim Pershing, who worked with Mike Melinda and designed this course, were more HPT, human performance technology people. Those things are difficult to define. Just like instructional technology is difficult to define. Educational technology is difficult to de define. For the first five years I taught this course, so I've been teaching at IU since 1992. I've been teaching them for forever. I moved to IST in 2005 when learning science people kicked me out. Ed Psych people kicked me out for various reasons. Um, just a kind of tongue in cheek, I say that. So I joined IST in 2005. I first taught this class in 2015, maybe in the fall or spring. And so the, for a while, we the old, the, the people who developed this course had a task where you had to make sense of ed tech and instructional tech. And the first assignment was to interview people on what educational technology is and what instructional technology is. But I looked at the syllabus and I said, the syllabus is getting long. There's a lot more readings that we I want you to do. And I, so I deleted that assignment. I, I, it's an important one, but I had to delete something. And that's what went by the wayside. So um, on the slices of the pie. So one is readings. One is doing the activities in this course, the tasks. You'll learn a lot from the tasks and maybe working with a partner on, I think I think I ask you to work with a partner on task three and task four. Um, it's in task five and six can be with a partner or can be optional. Task three and four, I would prefer you working with a partner. And um, if you work on a remote island off the coast of Japan and don't know anybody, then you can maybe do it individually or something, but just let me know that that's going to be the case. If you're working at Apple Computer and it's a 24-hour day job and you only have 15 minutes of the day to work by yourself, um, then you might want to turn it an individual assignment. And and Tian's laughing because he's working 25-hour days um, at Apple to keep everybody in line there. So another slice of the pie is the experts I brought in last semester. I saved all the videos of all the experts. I saved all the videos this one semester of fall of 2021, I saved all those too. So you got two full semesters of, of guests that I've had. The fall of 2021 were more the, a lot of the elderly states people and some were recently retired. The 
spring of 2023 is more of the young people. So if you want to read about, you know, or watch or listen to the, you know, people who recently graduated from IST or in the, where I haven't even graduated, there's still students in the program, go to the fall of 2023. If you want to hear from the people whose articles you're reading, you might want to take a look at fall of 2021. I've recorded other semesters as well, and I could go dig out the fall of 2022, last fall, of who I brought in here as well. I just haven't had the time to do it. I did, so I've created playlists. There's two playlists from each one. So you just click on one video and you can easily jump around and pop around to all the other 15 or 14. The one There's at least one for every week, although one week didn't get recorded properly um, with um, my uh, a session on authentic learning with two former students from Turkey, Ramsey and Oscar. Uh, so another slice of the pie would be listening to podcasts. And I've got a podcast show every week called Silver Lining for Learning. And I, we've started with the pandemic and we thought we'd last two months. And I started running. <laughs> I thought I'd last two days. I'm still running. 1,250 days later was today. So our podcast show started 1,250 days ago. We're at podcast show 163 on Ukraine last Saturday. And you can watch some of those podcasts and reflect on them and have that take, I think, assignment three or four or maybe six or one of them. Anyhow, I've got that as an option in here. Um, there's an organization called AECT, the Association for Educational Communications and Technology. They have an annual conference. This year will be in October. I found out one of the books I just did is going to get a little recognition there. So I'll be there. But there's people there, um, one person from Virginia Tech named Barbara Lockheed. And what Barbara Lockheed has been doing is interviewing um, famous people in the field to record them before they retire, before they pass on. And she's done a marvelous job. It's called the AACT Legends and Legacy Videos. Now, these are talking head videos. You might get bored after 15 minutes. That's okay. At least you watch 15 minutes. One of the optional assignments is to watch eight or 10 of them and write a reflection paper on them, what's common themes across them. So you hear from a lot of the folks that are in the reading lists. And I think that's a ben that's beneficial multimedia. You get to read them and you can hear from them. You get to see them and you, they might become more memorable as a result. So this ACT Legends and Legacy videos are one video stream. My lectures are another video stream. And the interviews I did in the last spring and in 2021, those interviews are a um, video stream. So we've moved from an age of Wikipedia to Videopedia, right? And one of the ones in 2021 is a guy named Richard Mayer, probably one of the better interviews. Uh, he's a lot of fun. 20 years ago, he was the most published educational psychologist, I think, in the world. So you can imagine where he's at now. His Google Scholar rating is off the charts, and he's such a kind person. His first job was at IU in the psych department. He is from he went to Miami of Ohio, I think his undergrad, and then went to Michigan for his doctoral work. And he studies multimedia and the impact of multimedia on learning, and has a book on multimedia. So I entered. I was glad we could bring him in, and he came in, and it's saved, and you all could watch it. But there are other people too, who are established in their careers that I'll point out, or I pointed out on Sunday, you can watch that recording too and get that. So that's another slice of the pie. Um, another slice is coming to, um, well, we're not gonna, actually, we're not gonna have weekly synchronous sessions. We're gonna rely on those archived and run this course async. However, if you wanna do a synchronous session, if you have a topic, if you have a person you'd like me to bring in, if you wanna invite someone in and have a chat, I'm all for it. I, you know, if there's someone you're reading about and you say, you know, I'd really like to hear from them personally, um, we can do that. But I know that last semester we didn't have all that many people in 511 based, who came to the synchronous sessions. Now, most people wanted the async uh, only because of bu the busy lifestyles and schedules and such. However, Every once in a while, you get a class that does want to have the synchronous session. So my 622 class last night, everyone, almost everybody showed up. I was pretty fascinated with all of all the people who were there. Maybe that was just week week one. I'm drinking from a tea, my teacup here. And these are all the students last year in 795 with me, or four of them, 795s on dissertation prep. 
and almost everybody came every week, no matter what the topic was. It was a real blast. I mean, it was so fun to, to hear what people's dissertation ideas are and, and how they evolved and see people grow. And so they called themselves um, Fall 22, 795 students are legends. <laughs> so they gave me, so they reminded me of, and you all can get me a coffee cup at the end of the semester if you want, or a tea cup. I don't drink coffee. Um, so I'm blabbing on. So another, so you can, you know, you can download the books, um, discussion, you can work on tasks with other people. So there are many ways to learn the contents, I guess, is what I'm saying. There are many, there are not, it's no longer, the world is no longer someone just lecturing to students and they take a test and you reiterate everything back. Um, I'd rather have you learn uh, on your own. I believe in self-directed learning. I believe in you know, people to you know uh, cho choose to choose their options and choose their pathways, and and so forth. Uh, I'm trying to think. If there's anything else? Is you know, how many of you have read at least a page of the syllabus, or you know a couple paragraphs from the syllabus? Raise your hands. Okay. So um, in reading those, thank you, Diana. And maybe we'll go around to see where everyone's from here. Um, in reading those pages, was there anything that struck you as incomplete or inaccurate? And there are inaccuracies. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to find five to 10 things that are just wrong, and I'll fix them, and you'll be getting another version of the syllabus. Uh, I have an assistant who put the syllabus up on the web, and he's put the old version. I sent him a new version right before class, so this is changing. Um, has anyone found a bug or anyone have a question? Jill, you raise your hand. So Jill's one of my visiting scholars from Taiwan. Yeah, Jill. Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, yeah, I just want yeah. to make sure so we can follow the sequence on the page 18, right? For every week's progress. Because I saw Diana have similar <laughs> questions on the weekly progress. So I would like to make sure if we follow the sequence. And uh, probably it's better for us to adjust our progress, which means we can alter, alter we can change the order of the sequence from page 18 to probably page page. Wow. Page 24. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. What you're saying. So oh, yeah. the order oh. in which yeah, yeah, yeah. So the order, if you look at this, this is kind of like from old established theories to new theories to um HBT, HRD to the future of the field careers within the field and that kind of thing. If there's a topic like many people like weeks 14 and 15, because that's jobs in the field, and you want to swap that out and read that first and you know, push the other things back. You have full control of doing that because I'm not going to be testing you on any particular week. However, it'll be a little harder to get into the discussion with others if you move ahead. But you're, you feel free to do that. One thing that I did that's different this semester is have two discussion threads, one for articles you read and one for videos you watched or podcasts you listen to. It says watch or listen. So I, I want you to be moderator of one of those, each of those during the semester. Now the moderation form might fill up and there might, because we have 19 people now, I think somebody added, uh, two people added, and I I don't even know who, did any one of you, a, a late person, a person that added late? Probably not because if you added this course late, you didn't get any emails from me. John, how did you find out about this synchronous session? Uh, just at the last minute. I, I only got accepted in the program on the 18th. And so I only got signed, registered on Monday. So barely, I barely just got, got up to speed with everything. Welcome to the show. So were you, you're in the, in Florida, like uh, Lucy is in the, in the ocean or where are you? Uh, Chicago. That's the oceans of Chicago. Okay. So, all right. Gotcha. That Lake Michigan. Okay, good, good, good. Well, welcome in and talk to me after the show today because you missed some emails, <laughs> of course. Well, did you just arrive or just get accepted into the program? Uh, yes, on Friday, I just was accepted in, so. Okay. 
I'm surprised you know, one person is trying to get in. Who was that? Who's here? But Brian, you're trying to get in. They said they won't accept you because you're late. Right? So, but maybe John got his application in earlier. When did you apply, John? I, it's all it, before the deadline, but it was, okay. it so was you got around okay, beginning of August. Okay. Okay. That's why. Okay. So yeah, there's it's, some people are trying to scramble and get in here. Are any of you on the baseball team? Are you baseball team? We're getting a lot of emails from the baseball team. I had one guy, mostly they're in 622, I think, the other course I'm teaching. They want to get their certificate in online teaching and learning and play baseball. Um, it's really interesting. Uh, so let's go around to get everyone at least say where you're from. Um, and so let's starting with Diana. Uh, what's your what's your major? Where you're from? And anything else, Diana? Hi, sorry, I'm feeding my baby right now, so I can't turn my camera on. But um, I'm currently in Indianapolis. I'm from Northwest Indiana. Um, I have been living in Indy on and off for the past like five or so years. My husband and I lived in Dallas for a couple of years, which was fun. And then um, I went to my undergrad at Ball State, and I graduated in 2013. So it's been a minute, but um. I am excited to be here and to start learning again <laughs> and to figure out how to learn again. <laughs> and what, what's your degree? I'm sorry, I missed that. Your master's? Or... Oh, I have an undergrad in um, a secondary education. I taught middle school uh, English language arts for about 10 years or about eight, nine years. And then missed... I'm staying home now. <laughs> yeah, I missed the IST. What are you in for? Oh, I'm sorry. I am in the master's program okay. for IST. So high five to John and Diana, because they're from the same region. It's called the region from, you know, Calumet, uh, northern Indiana to Milwaukee. They all pretty much all the homes, homes are built in the 60s and 50s. They all look the same. They, you know, that must have the same builder. You know, of course, the newer homes don't quite look that, that, like that. But when I go up to Calumet, IU Purdue Calumet or IU North, you know, it's like my home, my mom and dad's house. You know, it's all the same. And the accents are sort of similar. You know, lifestyles, dress. <laughs> now, this is the third day in a row. I'm wearing this white tie with a blue, blue striped shirt. But I actually changed my shirt today. I have, in the last two days, I've been wearing the same shirt. It's all smelly. Uh, but <laughs> Vivian, yeah, I was like, wow. Okay, Vivian, what's, what's, what, what's your major in here and where are you from? Uh, I'm living in Austin, Texas right now. Um, currently, um, I'm sorry, I'm from originally from West Texas, but, but I moved to Austin about nine years ago. Um, but I haven't really lived outside of Texas. Uh, however, uh, I did visit uh, for orientation, Indiana, which was beautiful. The campus was lovely. And um, I'm enrolled in the master's program, 100% online. And um, yeah. So, <laughs> well, welcome in. And um, I, my TA from this class just moved to West Texas into Texas Tech as a new faculty member. Oh, so she's wow. been my TA many times and just left town last Thursday. And um, yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah, I've been there many times presenting. It's, it's a good place. And we have yeah. many people in the other class from Texas, both from Dallas, so Diana mentioned, and from Austin. Um, so it seems like we have a, you know, and we have alums at the University of Houston at Texas Tech and other places in Texas. So um, Texas A&M and uh, yeah, we, there's, a, there's a Texas connection. Also. There's a North Carolina connection because East Carolina University has many alums teaching us faculty there. And in North Carolina, Charlotte has had had many alums teaching there as well. Purdue naturally does have many IST alums at, as well. Uh, Tien, you want to tell us about Apple Computer and how you're saving the company from going bankrupt? <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. So I am Tien. Uh, I was born and raised in China, but I now live in San Jose, California. Uh, I'm sitting in Apple campus right now because I work for Apple as a uh, engineering manager. Uh, yeah, I'm not saving Apple. I'm I'm just making more troubles. Uh, so anyway, I am enrolled in the uh, EDD program here. So yeah. Nice to meet everyone. I was also at the orientation. Get to see a couple of people uh, in person via Anna, Jacoby, and Jill, I think. So, yeah, it's nice. And and, and Professor Paul, too. So it's nice seeing everyone here online. Yeah, yeah it's good to have you here in Bloomington. And um, are you in a spaceship? 
the, the Apple uh, built that not space. Not I find it quite roomy, another building and uh, plants oh. and everything, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd be going to the spaceship and just, you know, beam me up. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. Maybe during the semester sometime you can have, if, if we can record something, for, I'd like to see, maybe Apple won't let you do that, I guess, um, you know, but anyways. Yeah. Uh, yeah let, welcome. Let's figure it out, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd, be, I'd like to, you know. Um, to see it at least if we could uh hopefully it develops you know the the create creative spaces you know what was designed for interaction spaces and so forth steve jobs designed that before he passed away you know not, not long before he passed away in fact yeah. one of the last big things that he did so yeah really cool glad you're with us um so we have two tas with us charise and lucy lucy talked on sunday night not Fully. She didn't introduce herself fully. Um, so Lucy, why don't you go first? It's Dr. Lucy Mello and Dr. Therese um, mm -hmm. will both. They just, they, Lucy got her doctorate two years ago and Therese um, last December. So um, eight months ago, approximately seven, eight. Yeah. Lucy? Yes. Yeah, so my name is Lucy Maramello. So Lucy, um, I am originally from Brazil. I uh, came to the United States. I lived in Colorado first. That was 1999. So I went back to school there. I used to be a language teacher in Brazil. So I was uh, an English as a foreign language instructor in Brazil, and then I went back to school in Colorado for a master's degree in information and learning technologies. Um, Dr. Brent Wilson was my advisor there. And yeah, it's at the he's University He's one of, of the Colorado. people I recorded. So he's in you. Yes, I Wilson, saw so that. He's recorded, All right. Yes. Last time I saw him was Saudi Arabia in Riyadh late one night. So we wow. were both he knows at a conference a in Riyadh. He's a good guy. Yes. So then uh, around 2005, uh, the whole family moved to Florida. And then in Florida, I started working as a curriculum developer and trainer for adult ESOL. And I worked there for six and a half years before they transferred me to the virtual campus as an instructional designer. And I stayed in the Indian River State College virtual campus for eight years. But then after I graduated, I started looking for new opportunities. And then I ended up in the corporate world. So now I'm a senior instructional designer at a AAA in the leadership and organizational um, department for HR. So I develop training, you know, they call VILT, virtual instructor, instructor led trainings for leaders, uh, online courses, all kinds of things, job aids. I've, I've learned a lot uh, hands-on, you know, but so, we'll see what happens. I'm only looking for something. Both Lucy and Charisse know a lot, and that's why I invited them. They'll be giving feedback in the discussion forums along with myself. I'll be in there too, but with these almost 20 students in here and with two just threads, it can get real... Uh -uh daunting for me to try and give feedback to you know get everyone something you know and so forth so you're going to get multiple forms of feedback hopefully as well as peer feedback so mm -hmm. when you post every week um try and give some peer feedback on what uh, and read and learn what others are interested in what they found many people use the discussion forums to share contents and what they found some students i've had in here try and do a summary of the the, the what happened they they create a concept map of the discussion for the week that's kind of a challenge, you know, but I've had people who love doing that kind of thing. And if that's what that's what you enjoy, by all means, create a visual or a mind map or a concept map of something you, you can, you know, you know, I'm not saying anyone has to, but you can. But the moderator for the week is expected to um, post a few questions related to the articles that he or she has read. 
So if you know you during the week you moderate, you might read more than on a weekly basis. That one that one week you might read five things instead of the three or four things. You might read six or skim them all. Um, and um, the, they can the moderator can create a summary at the end of the discussion and what took place. I used to have a starter and a wrapper. One that started the discussion, one that wrapped it. I no longer have that. And just the moderator serves all purposes, right, for that week. And you can sign up. I'm, I mean, um, I could put the link up here in the chat window when Therese introduces herself, and then you can see whether or not um, you have, in fact, filled it out. Um, I noticed a lot of people got in right away. Um, I think the co one of the Coast Guard guys picked week one because it's an easy week. I'm not going to grade. I mean, I just give him automatic all the points, you know, so he knew what to do. He went right in immediately. Aaron or what is his name? Um, so, yeah. Um, Therese is also coming to us from an, so Lucy was born in Brazil. Therese, tell us where you were born and where you're at now. Good night, everyone. I am <laughs> coming to you from the Caribbean. I am originally from Trinidad and Tobago, uh, which is a small island in the Caribbean, very close to Venezuela. And then uh, about six years ago, I moved to another small island called Grenada. So I'm currently in Grenada. I work at St. George's University, which is an offshore U.S. medical university here in the Caribbean. And I am attached to the School of Veterinary Medicine. I am an instructional designer and assistant professor there. I'm currently working on a really exciting project to redesign their curriculum using a flipped classroom approach. So lots of fun stuff happening. Um, I started off, my, my undergrad is in IT, and after graduating, I worked a bit in corporate, and then I transitioned into academia, and I've spent over 20 years in academia. I have a really long history with IU, so in preparing for this session today, I thought back, I was like, when did I do R511? And I think it was about 13 years ago, about this time, 13 years ago, that I would have done R511. I've done my master's at IU as well as my EDD at IU as well. So if you need any advice on courses, um, I know a lot of the instructors would have changed since back then. But if you need any advice on navigating or just adjusting, transitioning, feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to support you. And Dr. Bonk is excellent. If I have any advice on this course, I would say just keep as organized as possible in terms of downloading the readings, but take it one week at a time. And don't get too far behind in the discussion. If you start slipping where you're not participating in the discussion, you'll start procrastinating every week. So the, the biggest problem people have, I say, would be trying to catch up at the end of the semester on the discussion forums. Um, you can lose a significant amount of points if you're if you wait till the last hour to post everything. If you if you just if you're a couple days late, a week late, there's no points to be taken off. Don't st stress. But most of people post between Monday and Saturday, and sometimes I'll come in on Saturday night and respond or Sunday. You know, most time you know you can come in on Friday. You can come. You know, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter as long as you don't wait ten weeks. You know, uh, and there is normally one or two people that wait until the end of the semester, or they wake up from their nightmare at work, something exploded at work, and then they have to catch up on this course and so forth. Um, so that's the, the few people run into problems other in other ways. You know, if you if you um, do a task and you're not focused properly on what is expected, I'll just send it back and say, redo it. You know, I, you know, I might put a grade on there, a tentative grade, but I will let you redo it. If you've really, I shouldn't say bombed, it really cut, went awry of what was expected. Um, and so, yeah. And many times people go in their own creative path and that's great because I can get some great idea, uh, examples. And if you have an, Many of the assignments allow an option where you design the task, where you design the task and so forth. Therese, you have your hand raised. Do you want to make another point? Yeah, um, just back to that, keeping on track with your discussion pose. 
what really helps is some sort of time management schedule, especially since everybody else is working. So what worked for me would have been making sure that I tried to get my post done, my initial post done by like Tuesday, Wednesday. So it gave me some time to then um, read everybody's comments, write my posts from Wednesday, from Thursday to like Saturday, and then Sunday, start your readings for the following week. So you want to try and see how best you can set yourself up for success so that you're keeping up with all of the comments. And it can get very, some, some weeks, there's so many comments to go through. So just pick which ones that interest you, pick ones that you think that you could contribute to and give yourself some time to work on some postings and then come back later on but aim to get your initial post done early so you don't miss out on those so you do not have to post to both the read and the watch you don't have to post to those every week just the week you're moderating you can just go you know really some of you might just pick the reading ones and then reflect on those some of you might be more visual learners and, and might go back and forth so there's there's no requirement in that way but you do need to contribute some way and participate i'll also point out like I pointed out Sunday, for the last few years, I've used blogging as the tool for reflection. And students were in teams of four where they give feedback to each other within those teams and only those teams. And so in part, they miss out on the comments from other people because they only focus on what they had to say or the other two or three team members. But the good thing about blogging is you can take that blog when you're done and keep all those comments for the future if it's yours. When it's in, in, in this format in, in Canvas, you'd have to cut and paste, I think, or in search for your name and that kind of stuff. You can do it, um, but I have a book from 1998 on electronic collaboration, all IU-based, all my former students and faculty colleagues re did research on online discussion forums and uh, similar. And I just, I formed a group called the Computer Conferencing and Collaborative Writing Group at Indiana. We were gonna do a special journal issue and end up becoming a book, okay. Well, I've been studying this for decades. So I I kind of got bored with asynchronous discussion. So for the past few years, I've been using blogging as the tool. So I've gone, I'm going back to discussion forums this semester. And I'm I'm trying something I've used in P540, the learning theories class is just, just do async for a semester. And when I did it in P540 about a decade ago, it worked pretty well. Um, it worked pretty well. Uh, but there again, there is an option. I, I'm happy to meet synchronously, but most people have hectic lifestyles and we, uh, the program promises there'll be no synchronous required. So I cannot require synchronous or there'd be a lawsuit against me. I'd lose my job, you know, or something, you know, probably I get, I get, you know, um, whatever de uh, demerits, I <laughs> get some demerits, but um, uh, so, so yeah, so there's a couple of things there. Um, I'll try and point out which articles I'd read, but you know, you got to pick out which ones you'd read. Uh, we have one more visiting scholar with us is Jill. She started to introduce herself. Jill, you want to tell us a little bit more about you? It's a little noise in your background, so you might keep it short. Yeah, I'm in the, I'm, 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 <laughs> it's so embarrassing because I'm in the, uh, I'm how can I say that in the parking lot car shop with my son. So I appreciate the efforts of turning the course into a synchronous mode. Yeah, I'm Jill and I'm from Taiwan. And uh, my research focus is to compare different kinds of data, including the text and uh, the survey data and a lot of computer log data for uh, doing the, I mean, the performance prediction. And I I'm very happy to be here with all of you and learn from all of you in this semester. Thank you. And immersive worlds she's interested in yeah. and she just finished her phd a month ago so she's a new phd her not a month yeah it probably several weeks ago <laughs> so it's still fresh in her head we could have her do a presentation on her dissertation we might just do that uh jill uh in your we'll talk um her master's advisor was one of my former students, and that's why she got recommended to come visit Indiana for the year. So I've, I'm sponsoring Jill. She has access to my office along with Alicia, and then there's another person named Lena. Alicia's not here. She came on Sunday night. 
Um, so we have people from China, people from Taiwan. We're gonna have one from Korea come at the very end of this semester. She probably won't make it to this class, but she'll be coming a little after this. Um, uh, Jacoby, would you like to tell us about yourself? Hello, I'm Jacoby Burton. Um, as I mentioned before, I, for some reason I can't enable my webcam. So you just get an audio. Um, and then the picture says, I vote, I count. A little sticker from voting a while back. Um, but I was born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I now live in Avon, Indiana, which is just like a suburb kind of thing. They play um, good soccer there. I know. Yes. I played there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had a soccer um, experience last year with my girlfriend's daughter. So it was a lot of fun out there cheering. Very intense on. in Avon. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I got my undergrad in Indiana State University, uh, industrial and mechanical technology. Um, and now I'm excited to get my master's in learning design and technology. Sounds great. Sounds great. We'll all bow to anyone who's in mechanical and technical and engineering stuff and whatnot, STEM fields. Uh, Amanda. Sure, I'll uh, turn my video on, but again, I'm in a uh, hotel room. Let's see. So awkward light from the hotel. <laughs> Um, I am Amanda Shelby. I also live in Avon. I have three kids in the Avon School Corporation. They uh, do not play soccer, um, but they are karate enthusiasts. I got two black belts and one that's getting ready to test for a black belt here in a couple weeks. And uh, my oldest and I show horses semi-professionally across the country. So that, that's our activities in Avon. I am a registered veterinary technician. I have an undergraduate degree in pre-veterinary medicine from 2006. <laughs> so it's been a long time since I've taken any college courses, although I've been instructing veterinary professionals all over the world for the last, uh, since I guess 2012. I've worked at two universities as a veterinary technician in the anesthesia department, which is my area of expertise, uh, technical expertise. I've taught at a community college for veterinary technicians, the anesthesia courses. I've also taught in a master's degree program for veterinary technicians at Lincoln Memorial most recently. Um, but what I do currently is I am part of a company corporate integration between one pharma company that got bought out by a much larger pharma company. And I built an online continued education platform that was global with 40,000 subscribers in 120 countries. Um, so I project managed that website launch and the content that went on there. I designed it, edited it. I was reading one of the readings and I chose chapter one just to learn about the terminology to know where I'm at, if I'm in the right space for a master's here. Um, and the job terminology, that it was the chapter where the job description language kept going on. That is my job description. I started out as a KOL, so key opinion leader, subject matter expert, then had to start making content, then doing it in a virtual capacity, then editing it and closed captioning it. So I felt like that was my life. But, um, but yeah, so I'm very nervous about working on a master's in a um, non-medically driven field, <laughs> uh, but I'm hoping that from, it complements that. You know, we have students from every field. I mean, you know, there's a lot from medical, radiology. We had a whole group from radiology, in fact, for a while. Um, one of them's left. Um, and yeah, it's amazing when you look at the students who apply to our program and you go through the list, what countries are from, what disciplines are from and so forth. It's, it's quite, quite, quite diverse. I will say you did, you know, I, I, I've got three books on MOOCs and open education, massive open online courses. So, you know, and I taught the first MOOC at Indiana with 4,000 students in the class, but I've, I'm researching courses where people are tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands in the class uh, and, and so forth. So yeah, you're not alone in that, in that regard of ramping up huge courses. I mean, there, there are thousand universities in the U.S. engaging in that at this time, um, 
So I, I think I'm going to skip the other people for now. I'll come back to the, uh, there's a few I didn't get to. I want to show at least a little bit of the syllabus so we don't, and then we'll come back and then we'll have some breakouts and discuss. And um, that's what we did the other night. And then we'll see if there are any questions. Um, and But let me start, let me show you the syllabus at least. Uh, and a couple other things I got queued up in here. Um, but, you know, I'm not positive. I'd get to the right page. But so this is the sign up sheet. And as you notice in here, the sign up is, is already filled. So if you are looking to, if you didn't get a chance to sign up, please let me know. And my assistant, Seth, will create another column just for you. Uh, but send me an email that, you know, we have people very, so this is, this is a good sign. People are dedicated and committed and conscientious. Um, and Evan from the Coast Guard was the first one. And then Diana, then Katie and so forth. Um, you didn't have to sign up for the same week to be the moderator for, for both, but it probably makes a lot of sense to be to do, do the same week and get it done. Um, so yeah, um, logically, you know, you, very smart move by everybody. So that's, that's I that. just followed the trend. <laughs> oh, that's what happened. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jacoby. So if I go over here, uh, can you see this in language education or something like that? Um, I can't. It's hard for me to, to get my, um, there we go. You'll see here an article in Languages Journal just got published. That's my new article on, on ChatGPT for learning languages. It came out this morning, I think. There's the whole article you can get and retrieve by hitting the download button. That's that's just the, the, the title of the journal, I think. Let's see here. Let me do this. I'll... Yeah, okay. Latest, so ours is the latest article. There it is. So this is this is our article on embracing disruptive language teaching and learning and analyzing YouTube. We interviewed YouTubers who are teaching languages online. It's quite, quite a cool project, I think. My former master's student, Belle Lee, who's going to Purdue for her doctorate, and Shaojin Ko, another former student who's the director of our language technology center at IU, and joined me in doing this project. And again, you can read about it. I just threw it up there. It wasn't what I was going to show you. Um, I've got two articles actually related to Chad GPT uh, that came out in the last month. Um, so this is the home page, uh, the the syllabus homepage, anyhow. Uh, and it's not the most recent, but pretty recent. Uh, and in fact, it is not even. It's from last spring. So I need to go in here and just type in fall, and we should get a new one. There we go. So you'll see Teresa's email, Lucy's email, if you want to write them an email. There's also a Padlet for this class. So in Padlet, if you click on that, you can introduce yourself like Eamon has, Lucy has, uh, Christine has, and Evan, and um, Gion, and Viviana, and Amanda has. And Amanda has, <laughs> very professional. And Cherise has, and so forth, So um, and others. So yeah, why don't you take a stab at that? You might find someone who has common interests for possibly you know, working on a projects with them, and so forth. So use it as an informative tool. Use it as a course community building tool, and so forth. There's a link to the Zoom in there. There's a link to Dropbox, a link to my, my homepage. On my homepage, I've got a lot of free books. So the books that I mentioned in here, um, the Tech Variety book I'm holding my computer up with, you can download that for free. It's had 250,000 downloads as of six years ago. So it might be a million, I don't know now. And then we have a new version, Motivating and Supporting Learners Online, a little thinner. It has a free class on motivating students. And then I have a new special journal issue here, um, on the research in online learning. So if you're interested in that, this just came out and we turned it into a book of some kind, but you can go to any of the chapters that are in there and find out about um, the re what the research says about online learning. So three free things off of my homepage, three free books and other things are in there as well. And if you go to Dropbox and I recommend you go to Dropbox, in fact, I should almost require you go to Dropbox. You, in fact, you are required to go to Dropbox because that has all the articles. So the first thing there is the article listing for this class and you can download the whole shebang. They're listed by last name of the first author. So the first author, last name, Anderson, 
Baz Degan, who just moved to Texas Tech, Professor Bowling, Bonk, whoever he is, um, Amy Bradshaw, Brent, all these people are you'll find in there. You can do it weekly. I don't recommend you do it weekly. I recommend you just download the whole, everything in there. Um, free books. As I mentioned, I have many free books. In fact, there's a couple books that are still not done. I've got listed in the syllabus that are going to be done during the semester, at least one anyhow, on careers and, and in the profession of IST, basically. People at BYU have developed a website called EdTech Books. And at EdTech Books, they, they're putting free textbooks up for the world. And they're writing books. They're editing books. The professors at BYU are getting people from around the world to contribute chapters to these free EdTech books. So you no longer have to pay $50 to $100 for a book. They're all going to be free. And those that do cost money, you'll find them in Dropbox. So somebody, not me, somebody scanned these whole things in and gave them to me. So I said, oh, I might as well give them to my students. I, I didn't have the time to do it, but I did find them. Now, IU has a contract with different publishers to make books freely available. So some of these books are courtesy of uh, Indiana University and, and the power that it has in negotiating. So some of it's because the books are actually free, like my book. Some of it, sometimes books are temporarily free and I grab them when they are, and then they go, then they cost money. They're embargoed maybe for a while and some kind of terminology like that. Sometimes they cost money for a year and then they're free after a year or two. So there's different reasons why some of these became available. So Dr. Melinda's Ed Tech Definitions book, which I find kind of dry, but is a good book to learn about the definitions of the field and how it evolved and why where we're at. It's a good book. Dr. Reeser's book, on the other hand, Bob Reeser's, and this is there's a thick version. There's a, there's a thinner version. I have a chapter in it, a primer on MOOCs and open ed. There's everything you want to learn about in IST, the history of the field, instructional design models, theories, evaluating, um, managing programs, instructional strategies. I mean, there's chapters on almost everything, performance improvement, um, working in different kinds of settings, now, how to get a position in the field, and so forth. So Dr. Reeser is a Florida State professor. He's just retired this past year. He tried retiring for like 10 years. They wouldn't let him. He finally snuck out. Actually, they brought him back as, as a dean, as an associate dean for research when he tried first time to retire. Um, so he's done that book, and he's a marvelous instructor. I've seen him present um, in China, in, Shang, no, in Hangzhou. And um, the book is excellent. Uh, so this... So that's one. And Ali Carr Chelman, an alum of IST, has this book with point counterpoint, like debates in the field. They have one person on one side of the debate, another person on the other side of the debate. And then they write re rejoinders or reflections on the, how they're debating the topic, um, different controversial topics such as, oh, um, education is completely broken by Roger Shank, who's a famous AI guy who just died this past year. The learner-centered paradigm versus teacher-centered paradigms. Instructional design as design. People think that instructional design should just be about design. Um, and so our systems approach to instructional design, preparing instructional designers, different controversial issues within each of those topics. So Ali Carr Chelman was a, mat, was a PhD student when I met her 30 years ago, and she critiqued my presentation at a conference in Paris my dissertation presentation. I thought, who the heck is she? She's a doctoral student. I'm a faculty member. And then we, we became friends. And now she's the dean at Dayton, the University of Dayton. She was the dean at Idaho. She was a faculty at Penn State for a while. She's pretty well known. She was I think, involved in AACT president a couple of years ago. Anyways, all these books are up there. You can download them and use them and reflect on them and so forth. Then the other thing that's in here is, um, whoop, I went one too far. Let's see if I can go back. There we go. So other thing that's in here, my slides are in here. I'm hoping, I, maybe I've got to upload them yet. So some of this might be incomplete, but there they are. There's my slides are up here. Or Oh, that's the slides from the guests I had last year. So, okay, that's their slides. And then my slides, that's guest slides, then bunk slides are here. So week two, week four, week five, week six, week seven, week eight, week nine. Some weeks I, I have a, a presentation at 
strung over two weeks. So they'll, they'll be a missing in, a, in a week three. And then we've got rubrics. How are you going to be evaluated? So if you want to see my rubrics for evaluating particular tasks, um, they're there. Now we're not doing the blog reflection. So, you know, there's a different task. A rubric will be created. So you can see the different tasks. And, and if you go in here, you'll see um, what that rubric looks like, you know, and, and how, how I'm going to hold you accountable for different things. So go, go ahead and print them out and take a look at. It. I can't say that I developed all those. I got I got them from former faculty and I modified them, you know, like a good pirate. Then there's sample student work. So if you want, want to know what task three or task four looks like, you can click on sample student work. And these ha all have, or pretty much all have no names unless I got permission. So you can go and click on it and it will say no name and it'll give you the example of that task. So there's really no reason to get stressed out too much about the task because there's the rubrics, there's examples. Um, you can talk to me, you can talk to Lucy, you can talk to Therese, you can talk to Jill and she'll make something up. She never took this course, but she's just got her PhD. So she's good at making stuff up. You know, PhD means post hole digger or permanent head damage or piled high and deeper or all these things. Yeah, so she's now a PhD. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can get, you know, whatever task is in here and you can take a look at, you know, what someone did. Is there anything else here? Um, okay. So anything else? So the syllabus is there, of course. Yeah. And that will change. We're going to change. the syllabus. So that's right there on the homepage, you know, is all these contacts and it describes the course and the objectives. So there's the weekly overviews. And it, and it gives you indication that, that the first two tasks are due a little bit earlier this semester, September 18. Um, and that way you can get it done before the other classes assign midterms. And so you won't be so stressed out doing everything all at once. And you get a two month break before finals are due. So the final assignments, the big ones are due on November 6th. There is a two day grace period instead of my four or five or seven day I had last year. And the year before, I'm just going to get two days. There's always you can get an extra day if you're sick. So don't don't stress out if your kids are going to soccer game and you can't do it, you know, or karate lessons, you know. But it's a two day. So number one, so I can get these things printed out because I print everything out and I write right on them. So I, I will try. I might try doing digital, but I like writing around. My handwriting is awful. So maybe try skipping a line between paragraphs so there's more room to write. I do like things that are single spaced. And, and if you are face to face, I want them stapled because I can lose things, but I'll staple it. Um, but the number one thing is put your name on it. I forget to tell the Sunday night group, at least five out of 20 of you will not put your names on the paper. That's about 25%, okay? That's consistent every semester. So please just check that your names, even though your name's on the file name in, and you put it in Canvas, it'll say your name on the file name. And Canvas changes all that around and Canvas may, and Canvas doesn't time date stamp things at all. And, 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 and so I don't know, I have to, every time, every day I have to like print out everybody just because there's no date when, the, you know, if you're late by more than a couple of days, I have to print them all out again. Um, so the names on it is helpful. If you get it in within two days, that would be really helpful. I am going to Egypt the end of September as a, I don't know, a distinguished scholar. What American University of Cairo has worked out a deal with IU. Somebody at IU recommended me and I wanted to say no, but I always wanted to see the pyramids. So I'm going and going to be interviewing people from there for my other class. And I'm going to be presenting from, from there and so forth. I'm going to grade papers from there. So um, in the end of the semester, I'm going to Japan the first week of December and then Korea. Um, there's something called the ICCE conference, International Conference on Computers and Education. It's supposed to be in Singapore. I said, yes, I'll go to Singapore. You can get to Singapore easy. You jump out, you get on a plane, you go right back. Well, they changed it to Western Japan in some remote part. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get there. But anyways, um, this is the thing you do and people agree that you agree to things. So you can see the organization. To me, the, 
the more boring parts at the beginning. I can say that honestly, because I teach behavioral psychology. I took me, I'm a cognitivist. I'm a constructivist. I'm not a behaviorist, but I like behaviorism. I, I reinforce myself with food all the time and ice cream and whatnot. You know, ISD, ID process, those are old models. As you get into weeks six and seven and eight, to me, they're a little more interesting. Weeks 14, 13, 14, 15, weeks uh, 12, you know, the overview of, of trends in the field, where it's going, to me, that's the more exciting part of the field, um, personally. So you can see the point allocation within all these and how the grading will take place. I have to put the thing on on plagiarism, but hey, I, not only do I trust you, but I've built in assignments so you can use ChatGPT, not for cheating, but for generating ideas, right? So I'm going to try something new in here, and you'll see this in a second. So these are all recommended books, and they're all freely available in Dropbox. And Jason McDonald and Richard West are at BYU, number four or five. Those are all free books from the BYU guys, the EdTech books. And the newest books at the bottom with my friend Heather Leary and Rick West on becoming a learning instructional design technology professional. They're going to be, they haven't even finished that book, but it's going to be done in the next two weeks. So I put it in the syllabus and um, I thank Rick and Heather for their hard work. And, uh, you know, I th think it's going to be a highly used. These Free books are getting hundreds of thousands of downloads. I mean, people from around the world are grabbing these. And I put my free books up there recently. My friend In Sung Jung from Japan, now living back in Korea, her homeland, have a book on the Handbook of Open and Distance Learning. It just came out last year and digital education. My friend Donald Clark, who was a guest in this class last year, he's a hoot. He's a Scottish guy originally. He's got a thick accent, but he stayed for two and a half hours. We talked to him last year. We got disconnected, but he came back on and he he made money in e-learning early on, sold his company for millions and now just travels the world talking and blogging and keynoting and writing books and all sorts of interesting things. He's got three new books on AI and education. He is controversial and very interesting. He's got his own podcast. It just he knows everything about learning theories and he can critique any anything from, you know, uh, any teacher from ancient times to today. I mean, he's just phenomenal. And then there's the special issue that I did with Vanessa Denon from Florida State, a former IST student and Florence Martin at NC State. Um, and then my other two free books. So um, it explains things in here. Again, you know, I've got these recorded expert chats and so forth. These are them. So you'll see in here, Scott Gravinger and you'll see Brent Wilson, who uh, are both University of Colorado, Denver and Brent Wilson. Someone in here said they took Brent Wilson's. Who was that? Was that, was that Lucy? I think, yeah, Lucy took Brent Wilson's class. Um, so you'll see, you know, um, my podcast partner, Punya Mishra, he's a creativity expert. He writes amograms where your word looks the same word this way and this way. And yeah, he does all the creative intros to my weekly podcast show, all the sound and music and whatnot. Um, Merve Bastigan, week, the end of the week, that's the person who moved to Texas Tech. And then last spring, my former TA in this class from Stanford, Sunni Sol has week one, she develops apps for mobile apps and um, other things, math apps for kids and things like that. Cheryl Murphy, one of my first students who's vice president at the University of Arkansas, we had a real interesting chat with last year, uh, how they're working with the local industry in Arkansas to get people ramped up and get them skills. And they got big government monies to get people educated in the communities in and around um, Fayetteville, Arkansas. That was a great conversation. The second week, uh, Shaojin Zhao and Ling Qian, they're recent graduates and they talk about instructional design in higher education. They're working in uh, Shaojin at, at IU and Ling Qian at Akron and they talk about what instructional designers do. It's really good. And so does Renee Hong in week five. So does Yua Ma and Nathalie Gale. Yua is a current student, Nathalie's a current student, Renee's about done. They all talk about current jobs in the field. Meng Wan just graduated. Meng Wan Zhao is at IUPUI and works at Course Networking, which is like a Facebook for 
online learning management systems. It's like a Twitter, Facebook learning management system developed by my good friend, Ali Jafari at IUPUI. Um, and we go on and on. So, you know, see Rick West and Jason are in there, Donald Clark, Bob Cosmo. So on week 10, you're going to read the famous Clark and Cosmo debate on whether media has an impact on learning. And this debate used to be the qualifying exam for all students in IST to take their, to do their dissertations. Well, Bob Cosmo is still alive. Richard Clark is still alive. And Bob Cosmo has a new book. And he's twice been in this class as a guest. Last spring in particular, he asked to come back to this class. He enjoys popping into this class from Reno, Nevada or San Francisco. He lives in both. Um, and he's phenomenal. He is a phenomenal guy. John Gray is my first doctoral student in ed psych. He's come back a couple times to this class and he minored in IST, majored in ed psych. And he talked about the impact of IST on his job in corporate change management. He's living in Oakland. He was working for Accenture in Chicago for a long time. John runs a marathon like every weekend, like two or three of them, like ultra marathons. He, he does adventures on Saturdays and Sundays every week for the past like two years. And he's become his friends in Facebook. I mean, the, his pictures are phenomenal of the countryside in California. Maria Salamud is an experience center in, in Cyprus at PwC, including holographic images, bringing people by holography, really cool stuff. And she was a student here 12 or 15 years ago. And after getting her PhD at IU, she decided to get her MBA. Daria Vaughn is in Indianapolis doing corporate training and consulting. I think now she's work, working for a company. She was on her own. Whereas Gina Anderson's an alum who started her own company with her husband in Charleston, South Carolina. And she's a hoot as well. If you want to listen to someone who's very inspiring, a little fast like me, and extremely funny, watch Gina Anderson's interview with me. It's it's a, it's hilarious, actually. It's kind of fun. Um, Jesse Yee. So there's a playlist. All these are in a playlist. So you click on this first playlist up here. Maybe I can click on it and show you. If you click on that, you can, sh you can actually see every single person from last year. There they are. We're in, there's John Gray's and there's Maria Salamu and Daria and, and so far the Bo, who's my TA. Um, so you can read and, and see, and we'll can play them. You know, I don't, I didn't opera, I didn't optimize sound, so you couldn't hear it um, necessarily, but I could try and play it. So, so there she is, and she's talking about blah blah blah. That's Renee. I got to turn her off. Um, so yeah, it's every week is in that playlist, in effect. So that's pretty cool. So you can go to, you know, just go to the playlist. You can get all those. And um, Jessie Yee. Jessie Yee is not in the playlist. She asked not to be because she said some things that her current company might not um, fully appreciate necessarily because she likes her past job a little better than her current job. <laughs> okay. And um, so she's worked at Motorola, Vodafone, Genesis, Box, uh, and other companies uh, and currently at Fox. And um, so the links are there to watch it anyways. You can, you can watch it, just won't be in the playlist. And then my lectures. My lectures are also in the playlist for every week of the semester. And you can go to those as well as they're in all here, right? So that's, that's one way to get quickly through the contents. Um, you can learn about social constructivism in Vygotsky. You can learn about developmental theory in Piaget. You can learn about social cognitive theory in El El Bandura and motivation and, and other things. So then we go to task one, which is the reflections to sign up for those two discussion forms, which you have. And I'll let you read about the assignments and then there's a reflection paper on the discussion worth 50 points. And then we get into the midterm assignments. So this task two isn't due until I think November 20th, something like that, which is like the last day before Thanksgiving break. We go to break. And then we get to task three. And it says learning theories matrix and explanation guide. You have an option. You can do an expert profile. You have an option. You can do the brave people option, which is have chat GPT 
or chat PDF. I love chat PDF, which is putting a PDF in and it analyzes the PDF, but up to a hundred pages, over a hundred pages, you got to pay. So, you know, have the chat GPT generate some short book review, you know, three page book review or whatever it is. And then you critique it. You, you do a review on the review in effect. Um, option C, you see what that is. And then task four, creating a video and a video script of some kind. There are examples there in the syllabus. Those examples are not in Dropbox because these are video examples. The others were a paper example. So I put the video examples just as links here in the syllabus. So some of the links to examples will be in the syllabus. Some of the links will be in Dropbox. I didn't mention that to the Sunday class. I apologize. Sunday people, if you're watching, don't throw darts at me. Okay. So people on Wednesday get all, or Tuesday, today's Tuesday, right? Get all the information. Final tasks. It basically, many of the tasks are about showing your understanding of the content, creating a visual or a matrix or a comparison and contrast of what you've learned in the class. So option to that is a book review of the Ali Carchelman book or of the BYU guy's book or of Bob Reeser's book, write a book review or have chat GPT do the book review and critique the book review or write up some alternative paper based on chat GPT's book review or get involved in debates. Take a look at Ali Carchelman's book or have chat GPT do it. And final projects I have up here. There's one where you promote the field of IST to me, option A is one that a lot of people take, but I wouldn't do option A. I'm not that talented with visuals and stuff like that. And really not that excited about it. But the other faculty like this assignment, so I've left it in here. I like some of these other things, like developing something the rest of the world can use, like a glossary for the class. And so one of you mentioned you like glossaries earlier. Some of you might like the AC Legends and Legacy videos. Some of you might like my podcast shows called Silver Lining for Learning and watch at least five of those podcast episodes and write a paper on it. Some of you might want to design your own assignment or volunteer to help the local boys clubs and girls clubs and do a reflection paper related to this class on what you did with the boys club or girls club. Um, so personal choice. And then every week we've got different modules and different articles don't read everything. I will stop now. I'm not going to go through all the articles because I did that last time. And um, you can watch the overview from the other one that I recorded instead of me going through every article again and for the sake of time. Does anyone have a question for me? A question about the syllabus. Is there someone who hasn't introduce themselves like John. You want to give a quick present, uh, overview of yourself, John? I'm not sure if Jacoby has a question first, though. Um, oh, thank you. Jacoby. Well, thanks, John. Um, I was just, because um, I read through all 28 pages of the, the syllabus, um, and I just want to make sure I'm clear on uh, the discussion each week. So, as moderator, you're moderating both um, both discussions, and so you should read and watch a video. If you sign up for both for the same week, and it looks like everybody did that. I, was a, <laughs> I didn't plan on people doing it, but it's good that they did, actually. So in that case, yes, that I want you to moderate twice, and that would take care of the twice. Once the read, once the, the, the watch. So yes, the answer is okay. So you gotcha. watch at least three of those videos during the week you moderate and read at least three of the articles, preferably more than three of the articles if it's the week you're moderating, right? Because you want to be somewhat of an expert, but people can't ramp up to be an expert in one day. You know, I'm I'm not an expert at every one of these topics. I've been teaching the course for eight years now, right? And I've been an at IU for this is my 32nd year. No one can be an expert in this field because it changes so fast, as Lucy knows, as Therese knows. Things are changing, you know, even since they graduated, right? So thank you, Jacoby. Um, Katie Perry, is it Katie Berry? Yes, I'm Katie Berry. I'm from Bedford, Indiana, so I'm not 
far from the university. Right. Um, I'm in the IST master's program online and I taught for nine years in the elementary setting, but now I work in the financial aid department at the university. Oh, that's a change. Yeah. It was a big change. <laughs> big change. Yeah. Was, yeah. It, was it good? I've enjoyed it. I miss um, being in education. I do miss teaching, but um, it was it was time to leave the classroom. So gotcha. it was okay. a it was a good change, but I have things I miss too. Right. Well, I understand. Good. Well, welcome, welcome. Here is the first semester in or yes. not? It is. Yeah, okay. first semester. Right. Okay. And and who advised you into this class? Who was your advisor? Um, Dr. Leftwich. She did. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Good. Um, so I, what I've tried to do is ramping this course up and retuning it and updating it, but there's still, you have to have some classical articles or the field wouldn't exist. There has to be some substance, some seminal pieces in the past. And that's, you know, weeks two and three, the Dick and Carey model of instructional design and others are in there. Uh, I, I talk about it. Brian, I don't know if we heard from you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Malone. I was just hired at Indiana University. My first day was yesterday. Um, <laughs> I had actually, uh, so I'm on the instructional design team with e-learning design and services. Um, I came from Washington State University, and I was an instructional designer over there for just under three years. Uh, you escaped that. the fires. They're having fires right now. Well, no, I still live out here. So I live right on the border between Washington State and, and Idaho. Uh, my graduate school work and my and start of my career actually was at the University of Idaho. Right. Uh, I was an English, English teacher. I taught linguistics, academic writing, personal writing, professional writing. Um, uh, so some grammar classes. And I was in the classroom and... Um, actually ended up in instructional design because the pandemic hit and I decided to look for staff jobs nearby. Um, and then I, and then I, uh, now I'm, now I'm in the field. Um, that was, that was three years ago. And, uh, I, this is, this is my path now. So, um, spent a lot of time in the classroom, a lot of pedagogical training, a lot of on the job training. Uh, but, um, I've been feeling this, um, itch to credentialize a little bit, uh, formalize my, my, theoretical knowledge of learning, um, and also hopefully build out a bit of a portfolio as a learning designer. Um, I run a small business on the side uh, where right now it's it's primarily focused on writing services, but I would like that to turn into instructional design, e-learning design services. So part of part of my um, itch here is to, or my impulse here, I guess, is to, uh, to, to build out a portfolio, learn a bit of the authoring tools common in our field and hopefully offer some some e-learning design services on the side um, in addition to my uh, role at Indiana University. So um, uh, I, I part of my issue is that I'm shadowing the course only because I have not officially enrolled. Um, I had been enrolled in an e-learning design certificate at the University of Georgia and I was set to start this semester but then when my job change happened um, I realized that you all had your own version of that certificate. It was very similar. And I decided to switch. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm in the process of switching and hoping that I can continue with you all this fall. But if not, I'll start in the spring. Very good. And you're not alone in, in people finding this field from various... You know, early on, it was a lot of music people who were entering this field. There was a lot of music people in IST. And in fact, we had a, a minor... Um, anyways. Um, so what was I going to say? Do you have do you have smoke in the distance, fires in the distance? I think we may be getting some uh, out outer edge of the, the hurricane spillover. So for the last couple of days, it's been uh, raining. But before yeah. that, yes, it was very hazy. Yeah, there's some there, I, uh, yesterday there was some fires in at Eastern Washington University, which I've spoken at. Um, That's very close to me, about an hour away in Cheney, um, and maybe it wasn't quite there, but it was near Spokane, actually. There, there were some fires going on. Guy was showing up. Anyways, I think we got around to everyone, and if we didn't, apologies. I, what I'd like to do now is just break out into two groups, and I'll you know, have, have uh, Lucy and Therese had to leave. Other people had to leave. So, Lucy, I'll give you a couple of people. I'll take a couple of people and just 
What questions do you have? Um, and what do you expect to gain from this class? Do you want any changes in, in the syllabus? And then we'll come back. It'll just be a five minute. We'll come back and, and chat for another five minutes. Then we'll call an end for tonight. So I just want to get a sense of anybody's problems that they're facing, any issues, any unclear things, anything you'd like more information about. So let me try and create breakout groups. Just, uh, first, I'm going to pause the recording. Zoom. Are there any questions that came out during that 5, 10 minute, 15 minute session? No, there were no questions. Okay. There was only one observation, um, which is um, if you will add a rubric about for the discussion on how they will be evaluated. Yeah. The discussion. Okay. And I saw a rubric in at least a list of criteria for in 622, maybe. For the discussion in 622? I'll take a look for that. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. We can do that. Um, anything else? Or what was, give me one or two other areas that you guys were talking about. They were digesting still. Okay. Okay. It's under digestion. Okay. So there were no not questions. Okay. I did yeah. eat before class myself. Sometimes I wait until after. I'm digesting <laughs> too. Um, all of this. But I appreciate all of you coming tonight. And let me just say there so we we the reason I'm meeting twice in this orientation is because some people were probably you know, had other things planned for this weekend. And the other thing is to make sure you're starting off on the right foot. And it sounds like people are. Um, and so, um, you know, we will not have, I, I might have office hours where I say, you know, I'll, I'm going to be available at seven o'clock next Wednesday or whatever. And whoever wants, maybe, maybe early in the semester, I'll try and do that. Have, But I'll, I will, I've been teaching online since 97 and teaching blended since 93. Two people will come to the first uh, office hours. One person will come to the second office hours and nobody will come to number three, four or five. <laughs> Just office hours really don't do all that much other than help people gain confidence that really you know, need it. But, you know, so um, I'd be amazed if this many people came to office hours because, you know, you've probably already got most of the path figured out in here, but I'll, I'll put one up. I'll, I'll, I'll flag an office hour and see who, who wants to pop in. So good luck with the start of the semester for everybody. And the discussions are already flowing, I think, uh, or starting to. So, um, you know, try and catch a little bit of that the first week. I'm not going to really, you know, but do the, do the Padlet. The most important thing really is get involved in, in writing an introduction. So um, with that, I'll say you guys have a good night. And we'll see you down the road. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you very much. Bye.